Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to interpret an electrocardiogram in terms of the events taking place in the heart. You should then be able to use an electrocardiogram trace to identify heart conditions. And this is for the OCR and EDXL specs. In the last few videos we've been looking at what happens when the heart beats. We've seen that the sinoatrial node or pacemaker sends a wave of electrical excitation across the atria, causing them to contract. This electrical excitation is detected by the atrioventricular node or AVN. After a short delay, the AVN then sends electrical excitation down perkine fibers to the apex of the heart, causing the ventricles to contract from the apex upwards. Now by attaching electrodes to the surface of the skin, scientists can analyze the electrical activity of the heart. The resultant trace is called an electrocardiogram or ECG, and I'm showing you an ECG here. Now the pattern of the ECG tells us what's taking place in the heart, and we can divide the trace into three sections. The P wave shows contraction of the atria, in other words, atrial systole. The QRS wave shows contraction of the ventricles, in other words, ventricular systole. And finally, the T wave shows relaxation of the ventricles, in other words, ventricular diastole. Now we can map the ECG onto the graph we saw of pressure changes during the cardiac cycle. And again, we can see the different stages during the heartbeat. Okay, I'm showing you here an ECG trace for a normal heartbeat. The horizontal axis represents time, and each division shows 0.2 seconds. The heart rate is normally reported as heartbeats per minute. To calculate this, we need to measure the time taken for one heartbeat. To do this, measure the time between the start of the P wave and the start of the next P wave, and I'm showing that here. In this case, you can see that one heartbeat takes around 0.9 seconds. Next, you need to divide 60 by the time for one heartbeat. 60 divided by 0.9 gives us a heart rate of 67 beats per minute. Now, some people have a slow resting heart rate. If the heart rate drops below 60 beats per minute, then this is called bradycardia. I'd like you to calculate the heart rate from this ECG, which shows bradycardia. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, in this case, the time for one heartbeat is around 1.1 seconds. Dividing 60 by 1.1 gives us a heart rate of 54.5 beats per minute. Now, bradycardia can happen due to athletic training, which increases the stroke volume of the heart. Because the heart pumps a greater blood volume per beat, the number of beats per minute decreases. Some people develop bradycardia as a result of disease and these people may require an artificial pacemaker. If a person has a heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute, then they have tachycardia, and I'm showing tachycardia on this ECG. Tachycardia can be caused by short-term effects, such as fear, panic, or exercise. Longer-term tachycardia can be caused by problems with the sinoatrial node or other medical conditions. And in this case, surgery or drugs may be required. Okay, now sometimes a person may experience an ectopic heartbeat. An ectopic heartbeat is an extra heartbeat that's not part of the heart's usual rhythm. And I'm showing you that on this ECG. In this case, the heart contracts again before the first contraction has finished. This is then followed by a short pause before the normal rhythm continues. An ectopic heartbeat is relatively common and does not pose any health risk. However, if a person experiences frequent ectopic heartbeats, then that might indicate a more serious heart condition. This ECG shows a condition called atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, irregular waves of electrical excitation pass over the atria. This causes the atria to contract randomly and rapidly up to several hundred times a minute. In most cases, the electrical excitation is not transmitted to the ventricles. So as you can see, the ventricles contract less frequently than the atria. Now, because the normal rhythm of the heart is disrupted, 
Atrial fibrillation is a type of arrhythmia. During atrial fibrillation, the heart cannot pump blood normally. Atrial fibrillation is often treated with medication or surgery. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to interpret an ECG and identify heart conditions from an ECG trace.